since reviewing this house for the first time, not too long ago, some footage I saw from this house, I thought I would add to the allure, by starting with this warning message, because I admit, I had a little trouble sleeping, the night after watching it. So here's the warning. What you may see, may terrify you, and some of the images, caught on tape, may haunt your dreams. But if you are okay with that, come join me. Viewer discretion is advised. To the naked eye. When you look at this home, you wouldn't think nothing much. Oh, it's just a normal old home in a small town. A quiet town. Nothing out of the ordinary. And then you are told of the stories, the history, and shown the footages. That is when you see things differently. The hell is that noise? Son of a bitch! In a different light. A darker light. Oh my god! Over the years, Lamb House has gained a notorious reputation for its alleged paranormal activity. Locals and visitors alike have reported horrifying experiences, including unexplained footsteps, doors creaking open and slamming shut on their own, disembodied voices whispering in the night, and even sightings of ghostly apparitions. These haunting occurrences have turned the Lamb House into a hotbed of paranormal intrigue, drawing in those brave enough to delve into its dark secrets. Went under the bed. But beware. For the spirits of the past may be watching, and the shadows may hold more than just darkness. Are you ready to step into the haunted happenings of the Lamb House? Let the chilling journey begin. Located in the quaint town of Carmel, Maine, the Lamb House stands as a testament to history, mystery, and the supernatural. Built in 1806 by John Lamb, a prominent figure in the local community, this home structure stands tall with its eerie hipped roof and central chimney, beckoning thrill-seekers and paranormal enthusiasts alike. John Lamb was a farmer and a blacksmith, and his family was well-respected in the community. The house remained in the Lamb family until the early 1900s when it was eventually sold to other owners. John Lamb and Betsy Lamb had several children, and Lamb House remained in the Lamb family for several generations. The house was passed down within the family, and various descendants of John and Betsy Lamb lived in the house over the years. The Lamb family was known for their contributions to the local community, and they were respected members of the society during their time now occupied by Kent Burris, who has lived there since 2014. His channel, The Ghosts of Carmel, Maine, is centered around all the supernatural and paranormal findings in their daily lives. It has over five years worth of uploads and has plenty of captures and terrifying moments of these type of events. Some visitors have reported hearing strange noises and feeling unexplained chills while touring the home. There have also been reports of ghostly apparitions, including a young girl and a woman in Victorian clothing. Many believe that these ghosts are the spirits of the Lamb family, who have not moved on from their tragic past and continue to reside within the house. There are several cemeteries located within a few miles of the Lamb house, including the Carmel Cemetery, which is about 2.5 miles from the house, and the Carmel Village Cemetery, which is about 3 miles away. The location of cemeteries near the Lamb House may contribute to the rumors of hauntings and ghostly apparitions associated with the house. My name's Kent Burris, and I live in Carmel, Maine. I live in the Lamb House. This house dates back to 1890s, and it was constructed for the purpose of being a funeral home. 
The Undertaker and Carmel back in those days set up a business um, here in this house. Since we moved into this house in 2014, the first three years there was a lot of strange things going on. A lot of strange things I ignored because I didn't believe in paranormal. But everybody else in the family was convinced that the house is haunted. Yes, Edmund Lamb was a Freemason. After doing multiple investigations in this house, finding human bone fragments where spirits led me to them, that's when I found out Edmund Lamb was an odd fellow, and I'm like, okay, well, what did the odd fellows believe? The Odd Fellows, also known as the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, IOF, is a fraternal organization that has had connections to other secret societies throughout history. For example, the IOF has been associated with Freemasonry, another fraternal organization with a rich history of esoteric and mysterious symbolism. The IOF has also been linked to the Knights of Pythias, another fraternal organization that promotes fraternity, charity, and benevolence. In terms of the paranormal, there have been some claims that the IOF and other secret societies have been involved in occult practices and the worship of dark entities. However, there is no concrete evidence to support these claims, and they are often dismissed as mere conspiracy theories. It is important to note that the IOF and other secret societies primarily focus on charity, philanthropy, and social events, and any rumors of paranormal activity are not representative of the organization as a whole. That window and I'm upstairs, I keep seeing I through shadows. a shadow in the door downstairs, and it walked across the doorway. Your living room door inside. It oh yeah, there's something upstairs moving, I can see it. Look. But you're getting it on film. Yeah. But, all of these factors, the rich and long history, the cemeteries nearby, the claimed home construction for the purpose of a funeral home, and the ties to secret societies, may all be factors for us to lead us to believe that the Lamb House is a hotbed for paranormal activities. Death and darkness seems to loom from within and around the home, creating an energy vortex, a portal, for the past to feed on. And that is what the channel seems to be about. Where good but mostly bad spirits seem to come and go for the years of living in the Burris household. Kent's conviction that there may be a curse looming around his family and household captivates fans, like myself, to explore the happenings in the Lamb House and search for a reason and resolution. Hello. Hello. Holy crap. I can see you. What's your name? He's just standing there looking at me. What is it like living in the Lamb House? A lot of people ask questions wondering, how can all of us live in this house with all this activity going on? Nestled in the picturesque pen of Scott County, Maine, lies the quaint town of Carmel, home to just over 2,500 people and 1,000 households. Ghost of Carmel, Maine is mainly about showing people the paranormal activity captured on camera the number one encounter living in this house, without a doubt, are the disembodied voices. Some of them are real loud, some of them are faint. The second on the list would be strange sounds. I mean, unexplained, very strange sounds that you know for a fact are not normal sounds. A third oddity that occurs in the Lamb House are eerie apparitions caught in pictures. Here, a photograph is taken during his granddaughter's birthday party and was meant to capture a moment in time to document a special occasion. But, when a ghostly figure appears in the background, it seems to suggest that the boundaries between the physical and spiritual realms are not as clear-cut as we might think. It could be many things, but speaking in terms of the paranormal, we may be able to see something unsettling. 
The first few months I spent a lot of time taking still shots and walking around the house getting video captures of strange activity that took place here in the house. I didn't always capture activity. Maybe out of 100 pictures I'd get an amazing capture. What the hell are you? Honey, what the hell are you? Hello? Are you talking? What the hell is that noise? Son of a bitch! One of the most spine-chilling phenomena that Ken has to endure is a recurring sighting of a dark, shadowy figure that he affectionately calls the Shadow Dude. This eerie apparition has appeared before him on multiple occasions, often appearing suddenly as if out of nowhere. The mere sight of this ghostly presence is enough to unsettle and terrify even the bravest of souls. It's hard to fathom how Kent copes with living in the constant presence of such an unsettling and horrifying entity, but one can only assume that the human mind has a remarkable capacity to adapt and become accustomed to even the most terrifying of experiences. As he bore witness to the first anomaly at the Lamb House, an icy sense of terror washed over him. The entity lurking in the window moved its arm up and down with a frenzied urgency, as if it were impatiently waiting for him to depart. Upon later reviewing the recordings, he was chilled to the bone by the sight of a childlike figure dangling from the front of the anomaly. A strange sense of recognition gripped him, as if he had seen this spectral child before although the memory eluded him like a phantom in the night. I went through my file pictures and what I found was an apparition of the child standing outside the front porch window just looking at me and they looked like the same child to me. This is not the first time a child has been captured on still shots here at the Lamb House. What looked like the face of a young child looking out the mudroom door window. This was captured before I even believed in the paranormal. After I started Ghosts of Carmel Maine, my son went through his pictures. He found this and sent this to me. The Shadow Dude is a recurring anomaly that makes its presence known throughout the years on his channel. And to me, is by far the most disturbing events that occur in Kent's home. The following describes his first encounter with Shadow Dude. He was out on the porch when he noticed something strange in the window. He picked up his cell phone camera and hit record. It looked like two faces were in the window. In one of the faces, he could actually see the mouth moving and the eyes blinking. The apparition to the left was moving, while the one to the right just sat there and looked. This was his first capture of the spirit that today is called Shadow Dude. After seeing these two faces looking through the front door window, he went around to the front yard to see if he could capture whatever was in the window. To his amazement, a shadow walked right down the steps. It was after this incident that he called this apparition Shadow Dude, as he didn't know what else to call him from that time forward. He was out on the porch when he saw the face come up to the front door window. Shadow Dude was posing, standing there and looking at him then started smiling as if he was curious about him just as much as he was curious about him. He started calling him Shadow Dude, face to face. 
He took a number of still shots of Shadow Dude outside the front door, wanting to collect as much evidence on him as possible to try to find out who he is and why he is there. It always seemed like Shadow Dude was willing to come up to the window and pose for a picture, smiling for the video. He wished he could hear what he had to say, but he never heard him talk and never captured any EV piece of him, not that he knew of. Then he starts smiling and it's like he's curious about me just as much as I'm curious about him. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I mean, an apparition's coming right up to my window, just standing there looking at me, staring and waving and just smiling. And so I started calling him Shadow Dude face to face. Shadow Dude, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Wish she can talk. Trying to say something? Shadow Dude, what's your name? Shadow Dude, I see you. The night I recorded this on the front porch, this was actually the clearest image I ever captured of Shadow Dude. I took a screenshot and you can see more of the features on his face. This is the screenshot capture that was used on the Ghost of Carmel main logo. I started taking a number of still shots of Shadow Dude outside the front door. I wanted to collect as much evidence on him as possible to try to find out who he is. Why is he here? It always seemed like he was willing to come up to the window and pose for a picture. Smile for the video. This is one time I wish I could hear what he had to say if he could talk but I never hear him talk. I never captured any EVPs of him. Not that I knew of. Let me tell you about the one moment that kept me up all night. I stumbled upon this moment that was so terrifying that I couldn't look away. I had to slow it down and examine it in detail, even though it still gives me chills. I know it might seem like a bad idea to share it with you, but I can't keep this horror to myself. I want to confront it head on, and maybe you can join me in figuring out what we see. Well? Anyway, that EVP said I hate you. And I'm thinking about going ahead and doing some more um, screenshots on you to show people that that's not, that's not me doing the EVP sound. Oh my! I examined this encounter closely. While trying to get a clear screenshot of this encounter, I did notice one thing about this encounter. Once again, this was an apparition with a gray head. Also, the head was deformed. I started questioning, is this Shadow Dude or is this something else? This didn't look right to me. If we pause it here and brighten a still shot of the shadow, the figure looks fairly large in relationship to the bed it is on. I would think if it were a person in a costume, that it would be an adult, rather than a child just because of the amount of space it takes up on the bed regardless of the bed size, which I think is a full-size bed. Anyhow, I would think that someone of that size would make some form of indention on the bed even if it is the firmest bed out there. Yet when I look at it, I don't think I am able to see any pressure applied to the mattress. So me, 
being just some unprofessional eye. Looking at the image, I think the only way to fake something like this would be some video editing, adding some overlay to the video. What do you think about that? I'm not here trying to debunk this channel at all, just wanted to look at things from different angles, because personally I believe there is something morbid, something unexplainable, about the home. And Kent presents his channel as very authentic, and has gotten me to watch, and keep watching. With the popularity gained over the years, rightfully, came along some skepticism for all the ghostly activities occurring in the Lamb House. A few years after the channel was created in 2015, it began to gain noticeable traction which led to Wabi 5, a local news outlet, reaching out to Kent for an interview, hoping to uncover the secrets behind all of the terrifying videos. According to Kent, he had never sought fame or fortune through his paranormal investigations. Instead, he claimed that the spirits themselves had guided him towards sharing his experiences with the world. These otherworldly entities seemed to know Kent better than he knew himself, and they had a vested interest in his work. But with the popularity of his channel came skeptics, determined to discredit Kent's work. A Reddit thread questioned the legitimacy of his evidence leaving the floor open for debate. The Moonlit Ghost, a fellow paranormal investigator, even picked apart a couple clips questioning the authenticity with his own beliefs. Kent Boris from the channel Ghosts of Carmel, Maine, claims to live in a haunted house and has used this haunting as a springboard to pursue his interest of being a bona fide paranormal investigator. While researching this, I really found myself wanting this channel to be genuine. But the more I watched, the more I became convinced that something was off. The reason I think it's sad is because I don't believe that he is just shallowly lying to get views. His comments are disabled on all of his videos, and none of them are monetized. It seems to me that Kent really does believe in the afterlife, and that he is doing a good deed by helping bring closure to lost spirits through his paranormal endeavors. In one clip, Kent captures what appears to be a jacket or something draped in a window. However, it starts wailing, and upon closer inspection, it looks wildly manipulated, possibly by strings or editing. A jacket or something draped in the window, and you'd think at first that that's all I would think it was, but then it like starts wailing. And I, I guess you could say that it's attached to strings or something like that, but I don't have like a great explanation for this one, but I do for his other clips. In another clip, Ken moves the camera back and forth quickly, supposedly because he's scared. But upon closer inspection, the shift in perspective is too dramatic to be believable, indicating a possible cut in the footage because he's scared. This frame right here, from here to here, here there is the entity, and here it's gone. That is a pretty dramatic shift in where it appears the camera actually is, and I'm pretty sure I'm almost positive that this is a cut. The shadow entity is a lot closer to him in another clip. I believe that this is almost certainly a regular person standing there that has been rotoscoped, similar to Ehab's child, masking the outer shape of the entity, and that is created in After Effects or something similar. And using effect controls, the exposure is dropped to zero, underexposing the person standing there. And by doing so, all the details are lost, hence why you see a black void standing there. But in this frame, and I think this is what really gives it away, this frame right here, you can actually see where the mask did not cover the entire person. And you actually see a tan human hand on the bed. And that really gives it away. Then there's the rest of his evidence, which comes in the form of EVP. Other evidence such as electronic voice phenomena, EVPs, is also suspect. 
While Kent may truly believe he is communicating with the dead, EVPs are easily faked, and there is no scientific evidence to support their authenticity. Objectively, there are enough lines of evidence to, unfortunately, debunk the ghosts of Carmel, Maine, but I'm not going to toss it in the bin like the other ones, just putting that out there. Despite these concerns, some may still find Kent's evidence compelling. It's clear that he is passionate about his work and believes in the existence of the afterlife. But for skeptics, there are enough red flags to suggest that the ghosts of Carmel, Maine may not be as genuine as they appear. As for Kent, he remained resolute in his belief that the spirits had a message to share with the world, and he was determined to continue his investigations, no matter the cost. He also created clips addressing the skepticism. After reviewing the video from the capture, Kent had no idea what they were seeing. It appeared to be some sort of animal jumping from the window, and people on social media even suggested that it was their cat. Not jumping out the window. But this apparition figure is way too large to be my cat. Someone on social media actually believed that there is a string attached to a piece of material in the window. I took a screenshot of this encounter and ran this screenshot through different filters. These filters would show any type of string attached if this was true. You can see the AC cord hanging from the window. However, you do not see any strings, fishing lines, nothing attached to any type of material in the window. Some even said that you can see my shadow on the wall ducking down really fast as I pull the string really hard. What happened when I saw this apparition, I switched the camera from my right hand to my left hand. I stood behind the doorway. At this moment, I had no idea what this was. When it started moving and jumping from the window, that's when I came out from behind the doorway. That is my shadow coming up from the wall. Some people pointed out the human-like features of the figure, such as hands, feet, eyes, and a mouth. People said on social media that this was not a shadow apparition. What I thought was interesting when I heard this, I've never once claimed this was a shadow apparition. And I've never claimed Shadow Dude is a shadow apparition. One thing they pointed out on this, they said you can see a hand that's sitting on the bed. Apparitions do have human features. Hands, feet, eyes, nose, mouth, head, arms, legs. Some people also said this was my granddaughter posing as Shadow Dude. When you look at this face, I can tell you right now, this is not my granddaughter. And there is no way my granddaughter would fit behind this hutch. In fact, that would be impossible for any human to do that. A few people on social media said that there was a cut in this recording. They based this on the fact the room looked like it was a distant shot, but in the next frame the window was much closer. They claimed this was a cut. The camera I'm using is a digital camera. It's not a high-speed shutter camera. And if you move this camera quickly, it does look like there could have been a cut in it. Others suggested that it could have been a mannequin or puppet with strings attached. Other people took to social media and said that this is a mannequin or possibly a puppet and that there are strings attached to this mannequin or puppet. They say that I pulled the strings to make it look like it jumped out the window. Right here, somebody said that was a string. That's actually the electrical cord that goes to the AC unit. If there are strings attached to what people call a mannequin or a puppet, by running this through different filters on the screenshot, you would no doubt be able to see the strings attached to this. I ran this through different filters to show there are no strings. This was an actual apparition. Personally, I am not here to debunk Kent's videos. I just wanted to give the opposing side some view time as it is rightfully so, to be skeptical of what was captured. I will share my personal thoughts after one more segment highlighting Kent's latest video as of this editing. The eerie presence of the paranormal has been long embedded in the walls of the Carmel Main House, as if the spirits refused to leave their quaint home. 
The inexplicable events that unfold within its confines continue to intrigue and terrify those who dare to seek them out. With each new upload, the Ghosts of Carmel Main YouTube channel unleashes a fresh wave of haunting footage, capturing the latest spectral activity within the home. I've grown to be a fan of the content, and wanted to end things with looking at his latest upload up until the time of editing. Portals in the House of Hell which is part one of what he labeled the Ghost Chronicle series, the final chapter. Here he gives latest updates as to things he hasn't discussed on film and his decision to stop investigating and just let outside investigations only. Well, there's a lot of stuff that I haven't talked about, things that's gone on with this paranormal activity, mainly because for privacy matters, there's a lot of stuff I haven't mentioned from these investigations. In order to understand what's been going on in the Lamb House and with these encounters, I need to start talking about certain things that I've left out of the videos. Stop doing investigations on a personal level, although I have allowed people to come do investigations themselves and I told them I don't want to get involved with them with the investigations but the activity is still going on I still see things that's pretty mind-boggling I still feel things that's still feels dark a situation happened when I came home from work my grandson tells me that he was hearing noises on the living room ceiling so, I turn on the camera just in case, you know, something's going on in the house. And I walk up the steps. You can hear my boot work boots on. Bam, bam, bam up the steps. And I got the recorder going. <clears throat> I open the door and re re while I'm recording. And all of a sudden, the door just slams on me. holler at the steps of the witch's window room and sure enough my wife's up there with our daughter. No, I thought that was you up in the bedroom, sorry. So I go back up to the bedroom and there's nobody up there but there's something strange that was captured that I didn't see in real time. When we look at this scene where this shadow figure closes the door, I could not imagine that being a real person. The only way to fake something like that would be camera editing. The quickness of how the shadow moves, its silent movements as well, no person could probably do that. Anyhow it was one of those scenes that leaves an etch in my mind when I close my eyes. Oh my god! And in another time, he captures a creepy shadow while panning the camera.
And here a still shot was taken in a room where he captures this eerie silhouette of a person. And finally Ken dives into his childhood growing up in Los Angeles, California where he leads us to believe his family and those that come in contact with him will be cursed. He hints at future video where he will explore his history and I would believe will relate some of the events that occur in the Lamb House. Attempting to get down to the bottom of this so-called family curse spirit attachment, like clockwork, Someone would get seriously hurt, unexplained illnesses or even death would occur. I also noticed strange things taking place with people attempting to come to the lamb house or have been in the lamb house. But then one day, while walking through the dining room, I saw a book sitting on the table. The hand with six digit fingers and the number three really got my attention. I opened the book and what I saw shocked me to the very core of my soul. I have found that a person can innocently get involved with things that will draw the attention of demonic entities and when this happens, there's a price to pay. I started doing research into the family cursed spirit attachments. I need answers once and for all. Is there a spirit attachment that would pass down from generation to generation on my family? To answer this question, I go all the way back to my faint memories as a child. Shocking events that took place leading me back to 1965 and how these events eventually connects me to the Lamb House on a supernatural level. I will be tuning in to explore with the channel. August 14th, 1968. We're in the yard at our house in Compton, getting ready to walk to the park just a few blocks away. As we look towards the direction of the park, thick black smoke can be seen. Then we heard multiple sirens coming from a distance. A Disney helicopter crashed in the park. 21 people were killed in this helicopter crash. I remember seeing men dressed in white wearing masks, picking up what looked like large chunks of raw meat. After this helicopter crash, from that night until we moved out of the house, strange loud sounds would wake us up in the night. Many times all of us in the family would hear voices talking. What I felt in that house was from something pure evil, a feeling that can't be explained with words. Police receive a call from a woman who did not identify herself and says, I just shot my family. They find the woman laying dead in the kitchen with a gunshot wound to the head. Then police find 16-year-old Debbie Hibbard in the bedroom with a gunshot wound to her head and chest. In 2017, I spoke with the owner and resident of the Hibbard house. He tells me the owner of the house before him had to call a priest to come to the home to perform an exorcism. According to the next door neighbor, the resident said something evil was dwelling in the house. The family members experienced sleep paralysis and would have visions of demons standing at the foot of their beds. She tells me what the former residents were haunted by the most. These were the sounds of deep moaning voices. Since 2015, the specter of Carmel Maine has haunted YouTube, amassing an unsettling following of over 235,000 subscribers. Its haunting melody and captivating visuals grip me, leaving me spellbound and craving for more. The anticipation for the next installment is almost too much to bear. The paranormal activities caught by Kent in the Lamb House of Carmel, Maine is very terrifying indeed. Personally, if I experienced what he has, 
I would have been long gone as soon as the lease was up. The channel has been posting regularly for the past five plus years and has accumulated tons of paranormal footage to terrify the fans. I guess the underlying question for some of us is if it's all real. And I guess that would be up to the viewer to decide. And those around him that had the experience within that home. Authenticity comes into question. Kent, the enigmatic figure behind the channel, has captured the attention of viewers with his unedited and raw footage of the inexplicable occurrences that take place in his home. Some believe that Kent's authenticity is unquestionable, while others remain skeptical of his claims. From the very beginning, Kent started his channel without any thought of monetization. It was as if he was driven by some dark force, a need to share his findings with the world. He let others investigate the home on their own, drawing their own conclusions without much intervention. And his demeanor, calm and trustworthy, only added to the allure of his channel. But as time went on, Kent's channel became monetized, with merchandise available for purchase. Some may question his motives, but who can blame him? What he does takes time, and he must keep up with the high level of activity that takes place in his home to present content regularly. And what of Kent himself? He has lived in that home for so long, enduring terrifying and threatening experiences that have driven others to relocate. Yet he remains committed to presenting the raw and unedited footage of his experiences, despite the small following of skeptics who seek to disprove his claims. As a viewer, it's hard not to be entertained by the channel's content. But there's an undeniable fear that creeps up when watching Kent's videos, a fear that keeps us glued to our screens, unable to look away. We may never know the truth behind Kent's experiences, but one thing is for sure, I find it very entertaining. So if you dare to explore the depths of Kent's channel, be warned, you may find yourself drawn in by the fear and fascination that surrounds it.